Warning, this episode may create unlimited miracles in your life. Viewer discretion advised, listener discretion advised, you have been warned right off the top. And you can consider right now, are you okay with that? Are you prepared for that? Are you ready for that? But I am telling you right out of the gate, this episode has the potential to unleash an unlimited flow of unstoppable miracles in your life. I could not resist with that cheesy alliteration, but I really mean it. This episode has the power to change things in your life. Welcome in, everybody, to the Stefan Lovegrove Show. All things are possible for the one who believes, and you are the one. I know that to be true with all of my heart. I am so grateful that you are here if you are watching on YouTube right now, would you take a second to like this video and subscribe to the channel that helps us out so much? And it also helps you because it makes your algorithm and your feed better. Now, a little backstory here. I was originally just going to send an email about this, okay? That was my plan. I had it all laid out in my mind. That was my original intention. And then I got inspired and I just felt too energized around this theme, this teaching, this topic. And I thought, you know what? I think I've got to do an episode. I think I've got to hit record. I think I've got to get in front of that mic and deliver it that way. And you know, I'll share with you for a moment here. Over the past year, year and a half, I have really been thinking a lot about legacy. And I know some of my older mentors will say, Stefan, this crisis of legacy hit you early. You're a little young to be thinking about this heavy, intense, serious topic of your legacy. And maybe they're right, but for better or worse, it is the truth. That is where I'm at. That is where my headspace is at these days. And so I am thinking a lot about legacy and about what I want people to be consuming that I put out into the world, even 10 or 20 or 50 years from now. And so particularly in that spirit, I felt like this is an important one. This is an idea. This is a teaching. This is something that I want to have documented and available to people for years to come. And in a way that people can find and discover and revisit for years to come. So if you happen to have gotten to this episode and you're finding it down the road somewhere, weeks, months, years, maybe even decades into the future, feel free to comment and let me know that you were here uh, because that will make me smile and make me thankful that I took the time to put it into an episode form. But without further introduction, let me dive in here because I really am believing this teaching is going to be a turning point, starting point, pivotal point that you look back on as the catalyst for so many miracles in your life. So God, I just ask that you would lead me, guide me, speak through me now. I pray that every single person who takes the time to invest in themselves with this episode today would receive everything they need, everything they desire, everything they came for in this content, and even more. Because you are a God of overflow, and I know that for sure. Well, thank you for being here with me. Let me start here with this mini episode today. 
something that has always fascinated me over the years is that if we look at the life of Jesus, the ministry of Jesus, the record of all that has been written about Jesus of Nazareth. It's very apparent Jesus did not get equal results everywhere that he went. It's very clear. It's undeniable. And it's always fascinated me that Jesus did not get equal results everywhere that he went. Now, if I can go on a tangent here, and I'm not just having an ADHD moment, I'm not off topic. This is a tangent that I very specifically feel led to mention here. Jesus even acknowledged this and did so very explicitly. There's one place where he tells a story, and it is called the parable of the seed or the parable of the sower. And I will mention that pointing out along the way for anybody who feels like, Stefan, why are you always talking about this sowing thing at the end of every teaching? Why do you talk so much about law of the sea, law of the harvest? Why are you always harping on this sowing and reaping stuff? May I remind you, when Jesus talked about the idea of the seed, which, by the way, he said is a metaphor and a picture and an analogy that you can use to understand how God works and the invisible realm and the entire kingdom of God. When Jesus tells this particular story, parable of the seed, parable of the sower, he actually says right after, if you don't understand this story, this teaching, this principle, you won't be able to understand any of my teachings. So the law of the seed, the principle of the seed, all of these ideas and how they work together are very, very important. They clearly were in the mind of Jesus and to the teachings of Jesus who said, once again, if you don't understand this piece, you're going to struggle to understand all of my teachings, all of my parables, all of my examples. But let me continue here. So Jesus tells this story at one point that is again known as parable of the seed, parable of the sower. And essentially, he talks about the sower sows the seed. But in this particular story, he's using this example, and the seed is the message, the message being spoken, the message being shared, the message that is going out into the world. And in this story, Jesus essentially implies the seed is great. The seed is excellent. The seed is high quality. But as it is sown and as it goes out into the crowd, into all of these different soils, the seed produces lots of different results. And by the way, I think this should really be encouraging for every single leader and coach and teacher out there because I get it. You are a heart-centered leader, and your heart, your desire, your goal would, of course, be for every single person to get equal results, maximum results, best possible results. But maybe it's something that you needed to hear and be reminded of and maybe be reassured of as a leader today. Even Jesus, when he paints this picture of different results, seems to imply that in any given crowd he would speak to, he would only expect maybe 30% 
to get full results, to actually work with what he was teaching, to actually implement and integrate and live out the message. And well, that's not ideal. Well, that's not optimal. Well, we're not happy or excited to hear that. I do pray that it can encourage you as a leader. If you tend to judge yourself for why doesn't everyone do the work? Why doesn't everyone implement? Why doesn't everyone actually get results with good stuff that I'm putting out there? And maybe that can encourage you today that even Jesus said 30% of a crowd I stand in front of might get full on results from this. But again, going with the tangent, but all very intentionally here, Jesus tells this story and he acknowledges the message can be great, but every person is different. Their belief system is different. The soil that the seed is going into is different. And their response may be different, so their results may be different. I just talked through all of that to acknowledge even Jesus explicitly tells this story and acknowledges same message, different results. Same potential, different results. Same seed different results. And I wanted to share all of that as context because now specifically, as we move into a discussion of miracles, and of course, surprise, surprise, I'm going to define miracles for our purposes today in a little while. But when we move into specifically the discussion of miracles, it is once again evident Jesus did not get equivalent results for people everywhere he went. Which again, I've never been able to stop thinking about. I've always found that fascinating. Now, he was the same Jesus everywhere he showed up. The same love was there. The same power was there. The same potential was there. The same goodness was there. The same everything was there everywhere that Jesus went. So why then didn't people get equivalent results? Now, this is supposed to be, I'm trying to keep it and make it be a mini episode. So We don't have time for a full, long, extensive theology and Bible study moment. But I do want to go through a couple clues that we are given, a couple of things that are said, a couple of things that we are explicitly told along the way that help us understand why was Jesus the same everywhere, but the results were not the same. Everybody did not experience equivalent results. In one place, we are told Jesus could not do miracles because the people did not recognize that he was anything significant. They did not recognize anything special or distinct or different. They did not recognize that something profound, something life-changing, something healing was going on. I wonder what we miss in life because we fail to recognize it. What is right in front of us, what has been available to us all of this time, but we fail to recognize. And so one place it says they didn't recognize the moment. They didn't recognize what he was doing. They didn't recognize the significance. That's one example we are given. Another thing we are told is that there were places where nobody asked for anything. Nobody made a request 
Nobody put a demand on the potential. I wonder, are there things you and I could be receiving, but we're not asking? We're not making a request. We're not putting a demand on our potential. That's interesting to me about these stories, about these records. In another place, we're told that familiarity got in the way. This is specific to when Jesus was in his hometown. And I actually feel like I'm going to come back to this specific story and this specific detail in an upcoming teaching. But familiarity got in the way. That is profound. And again, I'm going to save it for another teaching, but familiarity got in the way. They couldn't see the significance because of the familiarity. That is another explanation we're given. And then there is maybe the most common, most blatant, most repeatedly stated explanation that we're given. And that is people simply didn't believe. They did not have faith. They did not believe for anything. And most specifically, they did not expect anything. Jesus showed up. Miracles were happening. Anything could have been possible. Healing is happening left and right. But there were people who did not believe. There were people whose faith couldn't get there. Specifically, there were people who did not expect anything to happen for them. So same potential, different results. Same source, different results. Same possibility, available to all, different results. Now, in the context of sharing all of this with you, I want to read a quote, and I put this in a partner note the other day. It's come up actually a few times in my content recently, and I want to return to it once more in this mini episode today. One of the greatest faith teachers of all time famously said, a miracle is always coming towards you. If you don't look for it, it may pass you by. A miracle is always coming towards you. If you don't look for it, it may pass you by. I'll give you another version of this same thought from this same source because they also said it this way. Every single day, a miracle is either coming towards you or moving past you. Now, you get to choose. In case that's not obvious, I wanted you to hear the, the, the quote, the principle, the truth both ways. In case it isn't obvious, they're not implying that some people are just doomed, some people are just cursed, some people are just destined for it to pass them by. If you feel like that, you've got to know today that is a lie. That is an illusion. I am so sorry if anybody ever told you that. I am so sorry if anybody ever made you feel like that. But God is no respecter of persons. You are just as loved as anybody else. You have just as much access to all that is available to you as a free gift of grace as anybody else. So the point of this quote is not that some people are just doomed to be in the second category where it never actually flows to them and just passes them by. And that's not the principle. And that's not reality. That's not the truth. What it's implying 
is that you determine which one ends up being you. You determine the end of the story in your life. You determine the results you experience. I can't think of any more encouraging, empowering, liberating message than that. But you get to choose. There is no fate that you're trapped in and you can't escape. You get to choose, and that is good news. And so the quote says, every single day a miracle is either moving towards you or moving past you. Somebody please type that quote out for us in the comments. And you get to choose. Every single day, I'll say it one more time because I know I just told people to type it out, write it down, etc. Every single day of your life, a miracle is either coming towards you or going past you and you get to choose. I pray that as you hear me speak this over and over and over, it integrates deep into your consciousness. You get to choose. And so in the spirit of that idea, that truth, that principle, this faith teacher would encourage people. Something that I am going to encourage you with today. You might have heard me say this before, or you might be hearing it for the very first time today. In which case, I'm so glad you're here, and I am so thankful that this message is reaching you right on time. But in light of that truth, I want to challenge you today. Expect a miracle every single day of your life. I want to encourage you. I want to challenge you. I want to invite you. This is the message today. From this day forward, to begin expecting a miracle every single day of your life. And I'm going to give you a very practical way to do this, to implement this, to work with this in just a moment. And I promise I also have not forgotten, I am going to give you the definition of a miracle in just a moment here. Thank you for staying with me and working with me on the fly in this spontaneous mini episode today. But it was a life-changing truth when this entered my awareness to start expecting a miracle every single day of my life. And that's why I'm sharing it with you. Because I'm not hoarding anything, okay? I'm giving you my best stuff. I'm giving you what I believe in with all my heart. I'm giving you everything that I know to be true, that I know to work, that I have lived and practiced and implemented and practiced some more and seen produce results in my own life. What would happen if you started expecting a miracle every single day of your life? What might be opened up for you, activated for you, accessed by you if you started expecting a miracle every single day of your life? What might be possible that you've never even thought about, much less believed was available to you? If you started expecting a miracle every single day of your life. And so again, maybe you've heard me share this before. Maybe you're hearing it for the first time. Either way, this is for you today. I want you to begin expecting. I want you to sit with this truth. I want you to at least open up to this idea. At least think about it for me. Will you do that? Will you at least consider Maybe I could do that. I could start expecting a miracle every single day of my life. Now, 
One thing that I feel like I've had many, many, many conversations with friends and clients and partners over the years about is, Stefan, how do I change my expectation? You know, you may have heard me teach before the quote, the truth that changed my life from a man named Victor Bach, that we don't get out of life what we want automatically. We get out of life what we expect. If that is news to you and you're hearing it for the first time today, please go watch the Increasing Your Faith series that is archived here on my channel. And it will give you so much helpful insight and ideas and context all about the principle of expectation. But again, we don't get out of life what we want. We get out of life what we expect. And often over the years, I have been asked, okay, Stefan, I hear that. It makes sense. I'm open to the idea. But what if I find myself with some bad expectation right now? What if I realize I'm not expecting the right thing? How in the world can I begin to change my expectation? And I want to share with you a thought from another recent episode today and remind you, it doesn't have to take time. It just takes practice. It's not that you have to wait. It's not that you're stuck in a holding pattern. It's not that it has to take lots and lots and lots of time but it does take practice. Changing your expectation will take practice. It will take intention. It will take doing something new deliberately and maybe doing it consistently, doing it repeatedly, doing it over and over and over. Now, I have a very specific suggestion that I felt led to offer to you today if you're wanting to begin to put this into practice. You're wanting to expect a miracle every single day of your life. But Stefan, how do I begin to do that? How do I actually change my expectation? And here's what I felt called to suggest that again, I was going to share in an email and here we are. So what I have started doing that has been a great blessing to me, what I want to invite you to do, what I am doing this entire episode really to encourage you to do is to make a list somewhere, preferably either a, a digital one that has no limitation or capacity because it's electronic or a physical one that has a lot of room and a lot of space, and can keep going for a long time, okay? Like, if you're going to do it physically, maybe do it with a brand new journal or notebook that is blank at this time, so that you've got tons of pages, tons of space, tons of room, okay? But I want you to get something, physical or electronic, you choose, Something in front of you where you can make a list, where you have a lot of room. Now, I don't want you to rack your brain and try to force it and feel like you immediately right away need to fill up this list with things. That is not the goal. That is not how I'm going to suggest using this. Here's what I've been doing. That, again, has been such a blessing to me. And here's what I'm going to challenge you to do. Every night before you go to bed, you can do it right around your skincare routine. You can do it while you listen to music. You can do it, you know, right before you turn off the lights. I don't care, but fit it into your routine would be my suggestion. So you can do it consistently and there will be an easy reminder you won't forget. Every single night before you go to bed, challenge yourself to find one miracle from the day that you can add to your list. At least one, I'm going to say here. Now, last night, just for full honesty, transparency, example sake, I will share with you. 
I think I actually put three or four on my own list. So you certainly don't have to limit yourself to just one. But what I want you to build as a habit is every single day have this list, again, physical or electronic, somewhere that you can use in your routine that you will remember to do this. You will remember every single night and make it part of your life. Make it a habit and challenge yourself right before you go to bed to add to the list at least one miracle that happened in your day that you want to acknowledge, that you want to remember, that you want to celebrate and commemorate from that day. And at least one. Again, you can add more. You can make it three or five or seven. But again, I don't want this to be overwhelming and I don't want you to feel a pressure to just make the list as long as possible. What we're trying to build here is the expectation piece, right? The daily expectation, the expecting a miracle every single day part. So it doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to be a lot of different things. Even just one is great because you will keep making this list over time and it will get longer and longer and longer and you will have miracle after miracle after miracle to reflect on and look back on and celebrate even if you just do one per day. But this is what I want to invite you into. Every single person watching this video who is still with me to this point who is listening, who is resonating with this message, you feel that it's for you, you know that it's speaking to you, I want to invite every single one of you to begin a miracles list for yourself and to begin this practice. It is already changing my life, changing my nightly routine, changing my expectation, which if you know me, you know was already high. But I have loved doing this, and it has been such a positive, such a gift, such a blessing that I knew I had to pass it on to you. And I decided not just to share it exclusively and privately with my partners, though partners, I know you're going to love this especially, but to share it with all of you, to share it here on YouTube and in a mini episode. Now, you might be saying, okay, Stefan, what should I be looking for when I do this. Because when I think about miracles, and particularly if you're going to put it in this context, you know, I guess I know that there's a story where Jesus healed a blind man, and then he was able to see. And I guess I know that there are people in the world who have experienced that kind of wild healing, maybe even that exactly. And You know, I did read an article about how new AI research and technology is actually allowing people who lost their sight at one point to regain it. So I get that maybe that's possible, but how am I going to find that every single day? And I acknowledge there may be people listening to this feeling like Stefan, miracles feel so big and extreme and dramatic and like a once in a lifetime kind of thing, or maybe a once in a blue moon, maybe once a year kind of thing. How in the world am I going to find a miracle in every single day? Now, this is what's going to lead me to my definition in a moment. But I will also say here, what I predict, I would almost say guarantee, but, you know, I like to often save that word for divine guarantees of things. So I'm not going to call it a guarantee. But what I will strongly predict is that if you begin doing this practice for yourself, automatically you're going to see some maybe wild, maybe cool, maybe almost unbelievable kind of things happen in your life and happen more often, happen more regularly. And so I just feel called to say here, 
I'm not guaranteeing that or, or even predicting that something insane is going to happen every single day. That actually sounds a little jarring to experience that. I don't know if that's a positive really for our nervous system, but I do predict, make no mistake about it. I do predict that, that the occurrence of unexpected blessings and wild coincidences and strange but good things happening in your world will increase if you begin this practice. Okay, so I do predict that. But I also don't want you to think that all we're really talking about here is the dramatic, the dramatic, the dramatic, and the extreme. So let me move to the definition finally, okay? What does a miracle look like? I want to give you a five-part definition here. Five ways that a miracle can show up. Five ways that you and I can experience a miracle. So, by the way, if you are up for this practice, if you are down to at least give it a try and try it for an extended season, let me know in the comments. I want to know, family, that you are joining me in this practice. If you are and you're asking, okay, Stefan, I'm ready to expect a miracle. I'm ready to find my miracles. I'm ready to document my miracles. What does a miracle look like? Here is my five-part definition for you. Number one, anything that is undeniably a God moment. So anything that happens in your life, in your day that you're reflecting back on as you go about the day, Anything that happens that you find yourself thinking, there is no way they could have known. I cannot believe that that came together like that. The odds were completely stacked against that happening. Anything that you have no linear or logical explanation for, anything that is undeniably a God moment. And it just feels like God winked at you in a personal way to say, hey, I love you. I've got you. I'm with you. Anything that it just feels like only God could have orchestrated that. Anything that feels like it just couldn't have been human. Anything that feels like this just goes beyond the normal, the rational, the logical. It feels like it had to be something more. It simply feels divine. That's category number one. Definition number one. What can a miracle look like? Number one, and somebody please type these out in the comments. Number one, anything that is undeniably a God moment. Number two, what can a miracle look like? Number two, any shift away from fear into love. Any shift away from fear and into love. That is a miracle. And that is a significant miracle. That is perhaps a miracle of the most substantial, most impactful, most lasting kind. Any shift away from fear into love. I don't have time to go on a long tangent here, but when you realize that nearly everything can be traced back to one of those two roots, one of those two causes, one of those two places, you realize there is nothing more debilitating, more paralyzing, more negatively impactful in people's lives than fear. And nothing good can come out of something that is at the core rooted in fear. 
Nothing can ultimately bring a positive result if the place that it started, the intention it started from, the energy it started from is fear. And so this is number two, and this is a significant one. Any shift away from fear and into love, you want to recognize that, you want to celebrate it, that is a miracle. Number three, as you're doing this reflection each night, what can a miracle look like? Number three, any paradigm shift in the way that you see something. Any paradigm shift in the way that you see something. You know, one of my favorite definitions of a miracle is that a miracle is a shift in perception, a shift in consciousness. And you might hear that and be tempted to say, well, Stefan, that feels like cheating. That feels too simple. That feels too easy. Like, I don't know. I wanted something more. Does it really count? If you're telling me, well, a miracle is a shift in perception, a shift in consciousness, I don't know if that's big enough. But understand this. When you understand that consciousness is the deepest level of reality and actually matter is the illusion, matter is the more temporary thing, Matter is the thing that can be moved by consciousness more than the other way around. I don't want to sound too hippie here, and I also don't have time to go into all the metaphysics. But when you truly understand how powerful your consciousness is, when you truly understand that everything in your life is flowing out of that place, when you truly understand that this is the equation it all gets created from the inside out. And if you change your consciousness, you change your life. With all of that understanding, you would never write off a change in consciousness because a change in consciousness gives you everything. A change in consciousness has no limitation. A change in consciousness can change your whole life. So definition number three, a miracle can look like a paradigm shift in the way that you see something. Any paradigm shift that sticks with you, any shift in perception in the way you look at something, look at someone, look at a situation, any shift in your consciousness that's a miracle. That's number three. Number four, what can a miracle look like? How can a miracle show up for me? Definition number four, any unexpected blessing, gift, or experience of goodness. A miracle is any unexpected Blessing, gift, or experience of goodness. I'm telling you, this is such a fun one. And this is one that will certainly increase and start to show up more and more vividly, more and more often, more and more frequently as you do this practice. But Number four, once again, for anyone taking notes and typing them out in the comments, an unexpected blessing, gift, or experience of goodness. These are the moments where something appears, quote unquote, out of nowhere. These are the moments where it feels like somebody showed up just to bless you. And they may not even know it. They may not even know why. But it feels like somebody showed up just to bless you. This is where you receive something and you instantly know. This is nothing that I set into motion at cause. 
I can't trace this back to anything. This is pure grace. This is just a gift. This is receiving just because. And it feels extra delicious. It feels like an undeniable sign of how loved I really am. That's number four, an unexpected blessing, gift, or experience of goodness. And then number five, what can a miracle look like? Number five, the fifth and final way in this definition of how a miracle can show up is a miracle shows up as one idea that carries with it possibility and change. Miracle definition number five, miracle manifestation number five. Please write this down and type this out. One idea that carries with it possibility and change. Now, you may have heard me teach before. I believe ideas are the currency of the universe. I believe ideas are one of the most valuable things we could ever receive. That ideas are so often exactly how God speaks. And that so often ideas are exactly how God provides. Again, there's so many ideas, uh, not to be too on the nose there, within this teaching that I could spend so much time on individually and I'm, I'm just trying to go with the flow and do what I feel led to do every step of the way here. But please know how important it is to recognize that so often divine provision shows up in idea form. It has been said, God doesn't always create tables. God creates trees that produce wood that can be created into tables, turned into tables, transformed into tables. And sometimes people are praying for tables, praying for tables, praying for tables. I'm believing God for tables. When is a table going to show up? And they miss that God made trees and God provided wood and trees turn into something and wood turns into something. And sometimes people pray for tables to use this metaphor while overlooking the trees and the wood that are sitting right there. And so again, without going too deep into this, I pray that you recognize the value of ideas. I pray that you recognize that God speaks through ideas. I pray that you recognize that God often provides through ideas. And sometimes your blessing is trying to show up in idea form. Sometimes even your harvest is trying to show up in idea form. And I believe, going back to the original story I mentioned, the parable of the seed, the parable of the sower, I believe this is one reason Jesus said, this is so important. You've got to hear this. You've got to understand this to understand anything else, because it often shows up as something small. It often shows up as a seed. It often shows up as an idea. And some of you will miss the greatest miracle of your entire life if you're not willing to receive it through an idea. Some of you would miss the greatest blessing you could ever be given if you're not willing to receive it through an idea. I have seen for clients over the years the way that an idea turns into millions, the way that an idea turns into destiny, the way that an idea turns into something bigger than any of us ever imagined or conceived of. So these 
are the five versions of miracles that I particularly want you to be looking for. Number one, anything that is undeniably a God moment. Number two, any shift away from fear and into love. Number three, any paradigm shift, a change in perception, a change in consciousness, a change in the way you see something. Number four, an unexpected blessing, gift, or experience of goodness. And then number five, any one idea that carries with it possibility and change. Now, I hope by now you're already realizing and recognizing and starting to see why this is so powerful. But as we move towards the conclusion of this attempted many, maybe many, maybe not so many episode, I just want to make abundantly clear what I know to be the power of this practice and specifically looking for miracles, recording your miracles, and acknowledging the miracles in all of these areas. Number one, when you do this and do this consistently, it opens your eyes to miracles you otherwise would have missed. It opens your eyes to miracles you otherwise would have missed. And I promise you, you're going to see this as you begin to do this practice. Something will pop into your mind or something will catch your attention. Something will pop out at you in the middle of your day, knowing that you're doing this practice, knowing that this is coming later on. And there will be a moment. And when it happens, feel free to come back here and comment and tell me. There will literally be a moment where you realize, I don't think I would have noticed that. I don't think I would have caught that. I don't think I would have paid attention if I hadn't been looking for miracles. So number one, it will open your eyes to miracles you otherwise would have missed. Number two, when you do this practice consistently, it will help you remember miracles you otherwise would have forgotten. I also would make this prediction and promise that as you begin to do this, there are things you will put on your list. And sure, you might have felt a little happy. You might have been a little grateful. You might have noticed or whatever. But there are things on your list that you probably wouldn't have even remembered a day later. Certainly not a week later. Certainly not a month later. Half a year, a year later. But now you have the ability to remember. Now you have the ability to look back. Now you have the ability to build your faith over time as you remember and acknowledge and come back to it and return to it and celebrate over and over and over again. And so number two, if you do this practice consistently, it will help you remember miracles you otherwise would have forgotten. And I pray, this may be obvious, but if I can just return to the definitions for a second, I pray that you, you see and that it is clear why you would want to both recognize and remember all of these things. You want to remember the God moments that were undeniably divine, do you not? You want to remember the things that helped you release fear and moved you into love. You want to remember the aha moments that were so significant when they occurred. You want to remember the unexpected blessings, the unexpected gifts, all the unexpected experiences of goodness. And you definitely want to remember the ideas 
that have infinite possibilities and infinite potential for change within them. I hope it feels so abundantly clear as you hear that list once again. You want to recognize this stuff. You want to remember this stuff. So as you do this practice, number one, it will help you recognize things you otherwise would have missed. Number two, it will help you remember things you otherwise would have forgotten as time went on very quickly. And then number three, it will help you utilize your power of expectation to the fullest in a way you never have before. And that is so significant because as I've already quoted here, we don't get out of life what we want. We get out of life what we expect. I think one of the greatest misconceptions in this world is people think their expectation it is just an attitude. Maybe I'm positive, maybe I'm negative, maybe I'm cynical, or maybe I'm more naive or open-hearted, depending on how somebody might look at it. Maybe I'm more upbeat, or maybe I'm more pessimistic. Like I feel like people think, and it's a huge misconception, People think that their expectation is just about an attitude, but it's not. Your expectation is a creative force. If nobody's ever told you that, that is a life-changing idea for you today. And if you know that already, that's a reminder. Your expectation is a creative force. So it's not just... Well, when I start to expect something better, I might notice it a little bit more. Like if I'm shopping around for cars, I notice cars a little bit more. Sure, that is a real thing. And that could be part of it. And that is a documented, proven, researched phenomenon. But it's more than that. Because your expectation is not just an attitude. It's not just a perspective. Your expectation is a creative force. It calls things in. It moves things in the invisible realm. It shifts things in your reality in ways that you cannot see until it shows up on the level of effect. So if your expectation is a creative force, it has to move the needle in your life when you use it differently, when you use it more fully, more consistently, more aggressively. It has to move the needle when you use that force in a way and to a level that you never have before. Now, I think if you're with me to this point in the episode, you probably were already open and maybe even already enrolled in the idea of doing this practice at least trying it out, doing an experiment with me. But I pray that talking through these benefits has gotten you hype. Because this is what you can expect. There it is, expectation that number one, when you do this, you will recognize things you would have otherwise missed. Number two, when you do this, you will remember things you otherwise would have forgotten. And number three, when you do this, you will use your power of expectation fully in a way you never have before. Now, please know that will happen subconsciously. And so even without you realizing it, even when it's not top of mind, even when you're not thinking about it, this will be happening. This will be working. This will be moving in the background. Please know that effect on your expectation will happen subconsciously, whether you're paying attention or not. But I also want to say, you will also possibly notice it consciously. And that will just be fun. That will just be a nice surprise. That potentially will just 
make you smile in the middle of your day. Because if you're like me, you might have a moment where it's 12 noon or it's 5 p.m. or it's 9 a.m. And you suddenly find yourself thinking and you consciously notice. I wonder what my miracle will be today. I wonder what's going to happen. I wonder what I'll be able to add to my list. And knowing that it is coming, knowing that the list is there, knowing that you're committed to the practice, knowing that you want to add something to the list, you will catch yourself in that moment and the expectation will be working in real time. And I pray that when that happens, it makes you smile and realize, you know what? Stefan was right. This has, in fact, already transformed my expectation. How do I expect something new? Well, it turns out I'm already doing it. I'm doing it right now. A miracle is always coming towards you, but if you don't look for it, it may pass you by. When you choose to do this practice, you're choosing for yourself. I'm not gonna let a day go by with a miracle passing me by. Not anymore. Not me, not here, not now, not tomorrow, not ever again. No longer are miracles gonna pass me by. And if every single day a miracle is either coming towards me or moving past me, I know my choice. I've made my decision. I am the person that the miracle moves towards and easily flows to because I am the person who expects a miracle every single day. You know, I told you at the beginning, this has been the greatest practice, the greatest blessing, the greatest gift to me. I can honestly say there has not been a single day since I started this that I have not had something to put on my list. And I've already been astounded by some of the things that have occurred that have already gone on my list. So again, please let me know in the comments if you will be joining me for this practice wherever you are in the world. And I am so excited for you. I am so excited to see what this expectation unlocks in your life. Because that, to bring it full circle, that really is the core idea of this teaching and why I started this whole episode going on a long tangent about Jesus and people getting different results. The possibility of a miracle would show up, but one person expected it, one person did not, and only the one that expected got the miracle. So just as I say over and over again, all things are possible for the one who believes. I know you are the one. I believe you are the one. I want you to be the one in that same vein. If two people can experience a miracle, one expects it, one doesn't. Therefore, one receives it, one doesn't. I want you to always be the one who receives the one who gets it. That's what I'm here for. So in just a moment, I am going to pray for you and close us out that way with a quick prayer, helping us integrate this truth. Right before I do, I just want to issue a couple of quick invitations here. Ways that you can take this deeper if it is speaking to you and resonating with you today. Invitation number one. You know, there's a truth that was spoken over me many times in my childhood 
through the form of talking animated vegetables that has stuck with me and that I sometimes like to refer to here because it still rings true for me all of these years later, despite the wild journey of beliefs and experience and exploration I've been on. All those years ago, the talking vegetables told me God made you special and he loves you very much. And I may have been on a journey since then. There may have been a lot of wild ideas in my childhood. And I might not believe in the real existence of animated vegetables, but I do believe it is a truth, an actual eternal truth. And I speak it over you today, if you'd like to hear it, that God made you special and God loves you very much. And when we talk about a miracle as a shift away from fear and into love, invitation number one that I just want to invite you into today is if there's anywhere that you need to make that shift, may this be the moment, particularly as it pertains to God, may this be the moment that you exit the fear and let the love in. Where there is any pain, where there is any trauma, where there is any idea or belief or story that would keep you in a place of fear, especially when it comes to God, it is my prayer today that you would know God is not fear or the source of fear. God is always and forever unconditional love. And that love is ready and waiting and available. And you can let it in and receive as much as you want of it. So anywhere that that shift is speaking to you today, I invite you to boldly move out of fear and into love only to discover this I can guarantee that there is even more love waiting for you there than you expected. That's invitation number one. Invitation number two, this particular teaching, as all of them are, was brought to you by my partners, an incredible and generous group of people all over the world who choose to give and support this work. I wanna give every single person who this teaching has spoken to an invitation to give right now. And this is the way that I feel called to do it today. Of course, if you are not already a partner and you are interested in that or feeling called to that, you can get all of the information at lovegrovepartners.com. But I don't really feel that the invitation today is meant to be so much about ongoing giving or ongoing partnership. Instead, I really just feel called to give a one-time giving thought in this invitation number two. And just to say, if you are joining me in this practice that I have outlined and shared today, if you feel that this was for you, and if you personally want this to be a line in the sand kind of day, where you always get to look back and say, that was the moment, that was the day that I began to expect a miracle every single day, and it started something new, and I will be telling this story for the rest of my life. If this is resonating with you and you want this to be that moment and that day, I just want to invite you to sow a seed with an unapologetic expectation of everyday miracles. I'm just sharing it with you unfiltered exactly as I'm hearing it right now. I want to invite you to sow a seed in this moment with an expectation of everyday miracles 
as long as you live, for the rest of your life. Now, I very rarely say anything about specific numbers these days in terms of suggestions or inspirations, but I'm going with the flow here and sharing it as I feel called. So if you'd like to do something specific and special and intentional with your seed in this moment today, I felt inspired as I was getting ready to record today to just throw out the possibility of repeating ones when it comes to your one-time gift today. That could be 11 or 1111. That could be 11114 in a row or five in a row. That could be 111. You can take it or leave it. Do whatever you want with it. Let yourself be guided to the right number for you. And of course, in whatever currency you're working with at whatever level feels right to you. But I think, if I had to guess, the reason that I felt drawn to that and inspired by that as I was preparing to record today is there's something in that about the best, but also the first, but also the infinite. And it just seems to match the flow of expecting a miracle every single day. One, over and over and over again to me, represents a new beginning over and over and over again. Living like it's your first time having the experience over and over and over again. The very best thing over and over and over again. And to me, it just represents, what if I expected the miracle today? Not one day off in the future, but what if I knew this was my one day? This was my day. The first day, the fresh day, the best day. I don't know if I'm articulating this well, but... (laughs) God, you can confirm for everybody what is right for them and what they're called to do to receive this word in a way that they will never forget. All of the options, all of the details are there for you. Lovegrovepartners.com But again, that's invitation number two. To give something in this moment, perhaps with that energy of the best, the first, the infinite, the ones, in whatever way you feel called, cementing within your consciousness that this is the start of a whole new chapter in your life that you will always look back on. And then last but not least, invitation number three today. As I often do, I want to remind you of just how interconnected we all are. You are not alone. You are never alone, even when it feels like it. And you were certainly not meant to do life alone. Having that experience, feeling that way. The truth is we are all part of something bigger than just ourselves. I think on a very deep level, our soul intuitively knows that somehow, some way, we are connected to everyone and everything. And we need each other. We were created to be loved. We were created for relationship and connection and intimacy. And so, In that spirit, I just invite you to ask for a moment, is there anybody who I am supposed to encourage right now? Is there anybody who could really use a check-in? Is there anybody that it would make a world of difference for them to hear from me in this moment? And it's okay, by the way, If you ever ask this question and nobody comes to mind, you don't have to force it. You don't have to feel bad. You don't have to just come up with a name just to do it. But if you ask that question and you do receive 
an answer. If there is anybody whose name or face or story comes to mind, invitation number three is would you take a moment to check in, to reach out, to say hello, to send some love, and even in this moment, to just say a prayer for them. I truly believe, and it is one of the things I am most deeply convinced of, that the world is so much better off when we all look out for and take care of one another. So I always want to give you a reminder and an invitation to do that in your own little way. It makes more of a difference than you can possibly know. Let me pray for you as we wrap up our time together today. God, I thank you for this message that was on my heart. Thank you for speaking to me about it. Thank you for energizing me about it. Even if it didn't turn out to be such a mini episode in the end. Thank you, God, for speaking to everybody in an individual, personalized, customized way. I pray that you would translate everything I spoke and everything I shared to make sure each person walks away with exactly what they needed from you today. Thank you, God, for this truth that there is far more available for us waiting for us, meant for us, than we often let ourselves receive. Thank you for the reminder that every single day a miracle is either coming towards us or going right past us. And we get to choose. Thank you for waking us up to that realization today. Thank you for that divine interruption and reminder. We always get to choose. May we never forget that. We always get to choose. So today, God, I bless every single person who is moving into this new expectation today. I stand in agreement with them that from this day forward, they expect a miracle every single day of their life. God, I bless them as they begin to do this practice. May they receive all five versions all five definitions, all five categories of the miracles we talked about. May this practice help them recognize things they otherwise would have missed. May it help them remember things they otherwise would have forgotten. And may it allow them to fully utilize their power of expectation in a way they never have before. I decree and declare, they expect something new and expect something miraculous from this day forward. And because of that expectation, they must experience something new. God, I bless any person who is making a shift away from fear and into love today, particularly when it comes to their soul, particularly on the deepest level, when it comes to their connection to you. Thank you for loving them. Thank you for being with them right now in this moment, meeting them there as only you can. I bless every person who is making a one-time gift. I bless every person who is sowing something with gratitude and expectation today. I bless them into expectation. I bless them into miracles. I bless them into a hundredfold return. And God, as messages of love and expressions of love are sent out all over the world in response to this teaching, I ask that in real time, we would be instruments of miracles to all those connected to us 
and all of those we are meant to love. Thank you, God, that this teaching now goes forth and brings about every miracle, every breakthrough, every transformation that it was intended to bring. I speak this word in the name of Jesus, who said, all things are possible for the one who believes. And I decree and declare, I am the one, you are the one, and together we say, and so it is, and so I am. Amen. Well, family, I'm going to be very real. I'm going to keep it 100 and say, I'm about to go eat a late dinner which I am ready for and overdue for at the end of recording this, we'll call it an extended mini episode. But thank you for being here. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for liking this video and subscribing to the channel if you have not done so already. Leave me a comment. One more time, I will invite you to leave a comment and let me know if you're joining me in this practice, in this experiment of miracles. And if you are, get ready, get ready, get ready for what's about to happen next. I will see you back here soon. I love you. I believe in you. And the best is yet to come.